Hello, welcome back to A Hopeful Hauler Makes. I am so excited to be sitting here again, working on how to sit and all that good stuff. <sighs> so, how have y'all been? I hope that, um, you know, the few people who have joined me have really enjoyed the podcast and what I've had to share so far. Uh, I'm Michelle Holler, and Holler is my last name, and A Hopeful Holler Makes is the podcast that I'm making. So, welcome back, and if you are new, welcome. You will find a video podcast all about knitting, spinning, crocheting, weaving, embroidery, um, possibly gardening, chickens, who knows? It's all about making, and... Um, and mental health. <laughs> That's what's uh, going to be thrown in at the end of every episode. So if you're only in it for the thread, welcome. If you want to hear all about it, please stay till the end. And if you just like health tips, ideas, thoughts, uh, just from my own personal experience, you can fast forward to the end. So I'm just glad you're here and I welcome you all. So let's just go ahead and get right into works in progress. So the sweater that I had talked about last time with using the yarn carnival yarn is called again, make a wish. So I showed it to you last time, but in case you didn't see, this is the pattern. Make a Wish by, um, again, Hohi Locatelli. So, again, beautiful sweater. So far, so good. Lots of fun to work on. And I will show you the beautiful color Amaranth by the Yarn Carnival. And I really dig the little zigzags so far. So I have heard a lot about Hohi's pattern designs before and I've just allowed myself to get into a rut of socks and I'm not gonna lie I like the rut of socks I knit my fingers know what to do my brain knows what to do I can go into autopilot and before you know it I have a comfy cozy pair of socks either for myself or someone I love and I I really do enjoy that comfort of having socks always available not dissing on the socks, y'all. But, even though this is quite repetitive, there are some things that, you know, call out to me. I have to pay attention. I have to kind of be on my game, so to speak, and see what's coming up. Um, so, I won't go into the pattern details, but she's a genius. Uh, you can just trust her and follow and do what she says to do but you must pay attention i must pay attention so i'm really enjoying that working on it off and on not not at a rabbit's pace not really fast or anything just here and there so again that's make a wish by hohi and um i have had a few people where I work, we are encouraged to share whatever projects that we happen to be working on. And so I've been showing people uh, the Make-A-Wish sweater that I'm working on here. And let me stop myself real quick. So just so you know, um, for you experienced knitters out there, I did block this lightly. I don't know if you're supposed to do that or not, but I just think it looks prettier. So it's not kind of shriveled up. Um, before I showed you so just wanted to throw that out there in case anybody was wondering and it does have a provisional cast off so a uh, cast on so you do that with a crochet hook and she gives you a wonderful tutorial link in the pattern um, but a few people have asked about that gold color and will that stay or will that go and it will eventually go so anyhow just want to add that tidbit and again yarn carnival yarn which I love let me just bring up yarn carnival real quick and um, 
this wonderful effort that they have encouraged us Texans in. We do knit in Texas, y'all, and we love to knit in Texas, and we love to knit in Seattle, and we love to knit wherever we go. Um, here, in, here in Texas, I shared a little, uh, some thoughts that I have on that on my Instagram, but just making in general, this is a we thing. It's a human thing. It doesn't depend on where you're located. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm on board with We Knit in Texas, y'all. And we spin in Texas, y'all. And we, we just do it all on our horses, on our way to work, right? <laughs> so this is a fall sock. That's what I'm calling it completely threw away the tag and I apologize for that again I'm working on it uh, but it's kind of wild and cool and most likely these will end up being socks for my hubby and so you can see I'm just doing a slip stitch on the heel so knit slip knit on that and it's just a continued heel with a decrease and then I'll knit to his size. So that's super fun. And this was yarn that I bought at Not Another Hat in, um, in Orban. So touched on that last podcast. So if you're more interested about that sort of thing, then feel free to check out the last one. And this is a little bag that I got before our trip. And I've not showed, shown you the bag yet and I also it's called uh, I also used it to hold my socks my Starbucks socks that I worked on while we were in Seattle and uh, took my picture in front of the the official first Starbucks in Seattle uh, that's my pumpkin spice socks with savvy skeins yarn and this is called a single single strand studio and look how cute that is coffee and lattes all that good coziness it has a wonderful zipper on it and you know what the zipper is fabulous she did a great job but i did something really foolish and i've done this a few times to myself and i'm sure i'll be able to work it out but what I did was, because I like it so much, I put my spindle, this is a supported spindle, inside my bag. So you experience. Folks can figure out very quickly what happened. This got caught in the zipper. Oftentimes I'll put it into a baggie and then put it um, into my bag. I didn't have a big Ziploc baggie and I just went with it and that's what happened. So anyway, eventually I'll be able to pull it out. I just haven't taken the time to do that. But I really thought it was a nice little fun bag. And I do enjoy coffee. I am, because we're going to be talking about health, mental health, and I believe that connects very much with our physical health. I... Unfortunately, I'm not a caffeine partaker these days. I had some issues with fibromyalgia and adrenal fatigue and coffee was one of the main things. The caffeine in the coffee was one of the main things. I'm gonna sit up so you can see my shirt, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, one of the main things that was causing me to have a lot of reactions in my body, I just had really achy muscles um, there were other things contributing to that, but once I cut out the caffeine, among other things, but specifically for me, I noticed caffeine made a huge difference. Uh, I spent a couple of days thinking, oh, it probably isn't that big of a deal, and had caffeine, and for me at that time, it was a very big deal. My muscles just really hurt. I was wanting to fall asleep about 5 o'clock in the afternoon, which is not my M.O., whatsoever and um, wasn't able to go to yoga and this was all within this last year so I'll touch on that a little bit more if anybody has any questions or wants to discuss that 
further, we can certainly do that together because I am all about let's help each other. So, caffeine. So, I'd, so my point in that with that cute little bag uh, by Single Strand Studio is I do still enjoy very much the taste of coffee. I like my coffee black. Sometimes I like it with different tastes, um, different syrups or whatever added to it, but I, I don't do that very often. Mostly just black. Enjoy it. Not sure why you need to know that, but <laughs> just wanted to share. Uh, continuing on with our works in progress. This is my works in progress. What are you working on? <laughs> what, what you working on? If you were here, you know I'd be asking you, what are you working on? Please tell me you have a project going. At least one. Maybe ten. Maybe three. I usually try and keep three pretty active. So one that challenges me, and I know this is a new thought, I think we've all either figured out, figured this out organically, um, looking at our time and the things that we wanna do, as well as um, just what makes us happy. So by that I mean, I like to have something like this. This is embroidery. And I don't know if, let me get it up real close. So that's embroidery, embroidery on just cotton. And it is a traced picture. And I am so in love with working on this. And honestly, I've had it put down while I was working on my Find Your Fade because I had a goal date. I wanted to finish that before our trip. But this pattern, Oh, this is so much fun. This pattern is from Crab Apple Hill Studio, Meg Hockey. And so she has several designs. And then you could either just work these pieces alone, or what I really want to do is work them all into a quilt. And so there's another one. It's really cute. And here is another one. And I, I believe I have a few more to, to purchase. But isn't that precious? I'm in love with a little place here in Texas called Wimberley. <laughs> it's a fun place. And um, anyway, this just reminds me of Wimberley and it makes me feel like I'm there, even though I'm not. So if you're not familiar with Texas, Wimberley is in the hill country. So it's in the south central Texas. So that is all of my works in progress. And I wanna show you an old project that I'm wearing. And I have my notes here. This is Old Town. That's the name of this pattern. So I'm gonna stand up and let you see it has a really pretty little lace pattern on it I'll get a little bit closer so you can see and then it has a really nice I don't know if you can see excuse me <laughs> um, a really nice shaping a little bit of a decrease around there and I made this a couple of years ago and you can see I I do have some mistakes when I was picking up. Oh, I need to look at that. Look at that. I have a hole. I didn't even realize. Ouch. Okay, we'll be going back to fix that. I've just recently started keeping all of my hand knits in a cedar ottoman that we have. But anyhow, I made some mistakes on the sleeves and I was very confused as. I made it and didn't clarify just kind of kept going but I'm really pleased with it I enjoy wearing it and I've had other knitters comment on it okay so while we're here and I'm showing you this people can change yes they can yes they can um so my point is I am very pleased with this sweater the yarn is from Madeline Tosh. Uh, when she had a brick and mortar 
store here in Fort Worth, I had the wonderful opportunity and blessing to work there for six months. And that would, I, I feel like I gained a lot of really good experience with working with the public and that served me well now working at the Log Cabin Village. And it helped clarify the fact that I never want to own my own yarn store, um, but I certainly enjoy uh, perusing, perusing a yarn store, uh, shopping at a yarn store, being friends with people who own yarn stores. Um, but I personally, just that's not something in my reality that I actually do want. In the fantasy, Michelle, yes, but there are other things that I would really love to do that I'm pursuing, but owning a yarn shop is not one of them. So that's it for progress, uh, works in progress. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about 2018. Happy Thanksgiving. It's here. This is Monday, uh, the 20th of November and Thanksgiving is just a couple of few days away and so just within the last couple of years uh, my mother passed away in 2015 and she would always purchase a planner for me because I guess she knew I really needed one and um, for a couple of years after she got it for me I would put it out on my desk and um, I would mostly just enjoy the pictures of what she got me and on occasion circle certain things. And then I got more into the idea of organizing um, my time in certain rituals and certain patterns and things that I found helpful to take the chaos of my life and, you know, plan it down a little bit more. <laughs> So in case I haven't told you, my husband's a CPA, and I'm as far to the left from a CPA brain as possible. So this is actually very beneficial for me and for my life. And so this is one that I just picked up at Half Price Bookstore, but I had recently been talking to a coworker about bullet journaling. And in my again, in my fantasy world of my ideal self, I'm doing all of these things all of the time, and that is not my reality. So, I do enjoy drawing, and I do enjoy doodling, um, but I just, I enjoy so many other things. For me, at this point in time, I think I'll just continue to admire other people's bullet journals and um, just take little ideas from what they do, just to add to my own little journal. So this is all already pre-done, but I will say one thing that I find very helpful is to have a calendar, you know, that has the month at glance, of course, but then, um, dun, dun, dun. ha, this is where the reality of the plan <laughs> comes to be. All of that space right there for every day, those precious 24 hours and what I'm going to do with those that's that's where it all gets worked out and then what i really like also is at the very end of the month it has notes so i can make notes about um, my crafts um, time with friends and family um, health and fitness whatnot for me it really does help me stay accountable with my life and the things that i feel called to do in my life to have this sort of journal here so a uh, journal, a journal of my days, a day of, yeah, a planner. So, uh, journaling, kind of a different thing. I'll touch on that another time. So, let me look at my notes real quick. Y'all, I'm so excited. Okay. Dunkel Gruen. Have y'all been to her uh, Instagram? Oh my goodness. So she, this was a few months ago, she made this adorable unicorn. To me, it looks like it's probably about this big. And it is just so adorable. And there's a very special little girl in my life that I would love to make that for, who just adores unicorns. And doesn't the world need more unicorns? 
So I volunteered to test knit and unfortunately I was late on that and so she already had enough test knitters so as soon as it was ready to sell, I whipped that sucker up. So I purchased the kit uh, so it has a pattern and the yarn for the unicorn and that's supposed to be coming from Germany uh, sometime this week and so she and I have been communicating and she wants to offer my viewers a free pattern she wants to gift you a pattern so I think I'm gonna do what I see everybody else do I've never done this before I've never done a giveaway I've sent things to podcasters to give away um, in the past but I on my podcast you know this is number six um, this will be the first time that I do a giveaway so it'll be her and that's really special to me because German holds Germany holds a very special place in my heart that I'll probably share at another time and so I wish I could show it to you but I will post that on my um, Instagram later this afternoon and I am recording obviously right now here on Monday and we'll my husband and I will get it edited and out later this week so I see I have only a few minutes to chat with you about blue October so my shirt here that you can see it says people can change if you follow me on Instagram you know that my husband and I just got back from Oklahoma seeing my favorite band blue October and I shared on my podcast that I'd tell you a little bit more about me and my journey and it's honestly one of many reasons why I really enjoy blue October's music so much first of all I can get pretty passionate about anybody who has overcome and by overcome I mean uh, they've not they've not surrendered to their demons and I also respect and cheer on those who are are struggling we it's such a hard thing to talk about for me um we all have the gift of of grace it's available to us all and so it's hard for me to take that hard line of suck it up, um, just stop <laughs> and get better. I believe it's a journey and there have been integral things that have happened in my life um, that helped me from my own experience to know that I can't make anyone change. I can only do what I'm called to do to take care of what I've got going on in here and then that affects my relationship with other people and again not to say that I'm perfect by any means that's not my point and I hope no one hears me saying that um, in fact right the complete opposite that I recognize my defects I'm aware of the loops that play out in my mind and so um, self-compassion for me comes before I can be kind to you or see you truly for who you are and where you're at instead of judging and I don't mean judging like you're going to heaven or you're going to hell but we're just talking very real and practical like seeing someone who is I'll, I'll give an example when I see a homeless person I have always had a very um, very strong connection to the homeless and to the poor um, feeling like there be but by the grace of God go on so um, a little bit about me right before we end so um, this may need to take a whole nother podcast I think it will because I have five minutes <laughs> but I in my life there were uh, traumas that happened when I was 
a child and I am open and I do cry not not because I'm still working through it but just anytime I share about anything I could be sharing about yoga and I start crying not because it makes me sad and I'm working through something but for me it's just it's so so intimate to to who I am and again not that I identify with being um, traumatized but just in the sharing I hope that makes sense so as a young girl sexually ab abused by an uncle and um, already wasn't a great student in school cried all the time I I don't remember crying a lot before that. I just remember approximately the age of seven, eight, nine, crying a lot at school and just not enjoying school, wanting to never go to school other than um, wanting friends, but I cried all the time. So that was kind of a weird thing and uh, not a lot of people wanted to be around that strangely. And so, anyway, being called a crybaby and um, various things, um, horse mouth, in case you haven't noticed, I have big gums. And so, anyway, picked on. And um, so all of these, these things right there alone um, caused me, I feel those are some roots of not feeling good enough, ashamed, um, just sad all the time and so there were other things going on at home that were very hard in my family and so I had big 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 feelings <laughs> always have had very big feelings and could be very intense and it felt to me like other people couldn't see that or didn't care or didn't know these were just the feelings I had at that time. So, anyway, by the time I was 17, and that's a big fast forward, and lots of things occurred during that time <clears throat> within my family that I continued to feel, um, feel more and more broken. A dear person in my life uh, mentioned that uh, they believed that I always felt like something was missing in my life. And that's the truth. For a majority of my life, I felt like something was missing, that I wasn't complete or enough. And so, again, these are not sad, broken, poor, woe is me tears. These are honestly joyful, happy, grateful tears. And so, when I talk about Blue October, and I encourage other people to listen to Blue October, some may think, well, it doesn't matter what other people think, <laughs> but anyway, I, I know that I just talk about them so much because I feel like their music can really connect to people maybe like me who have been through some hard things in their young life, or maybe they're older like me. I'm about to turn 47, and maybe they have never been aware of why they do what they do and looked at those things. And it could be very scary if you've never done that before. So, um, unfortunately, I'm gonna need to cut this into two videos. So it will be part one and part two. I see my time running out, so we'll go on to part two. Bye-bye.